Hello, my name is Ian McCall and this is another of the consultations in dermatology from the Australian uh, Institute of Dermatology. <coughs> Today we're going to look at lichen planus. Now this is quite a common condition. It represents possibly about 5% of the uh, skin disease that we may see in specialist practice. Uh, in some parts of the world that's, that figure is in fact correct. In other parts it's a lot less. It's an interesting condition because we really don't know the cause. If it isn't a drug and if it isn't uh, due to underlying hepatitis C then in the vast majority of cases we never find out what causes it. We think of it as being an autoimmune disease and it may be seen in association with other autoimmune diseases such as lupus and uh, even bullous pentagon. but in most cases it just occurs on its own. Classically the lesions are described as being small flat topped violaceous polygonal papules and the classic area to find them is in fact on the uh, on the wrist. Uh, this picture here probably shows it best. They're usually itchy. You can see the polygonal shape uh, of them. They may join up together to form a plaque. If you look carefully on the surface you'll see some small white Wickham striae, little white lines. Uh, it's more obvious if you take a dermatoscope to it. But, as I say, the papules may join up in this fashion and form a large plaque, and here there's even a bit of an erosion in that plaque. Sometimes the degree of inflammation that's occurring at the dermoepidermal junction can cause an actual blister to form, but uh, that's really quite a, late, a rare uh, occurrence. This picture is much more typical, where the papules join up to form a purplish plaque like this. Note the colour. That colour is very lichen planus. Uh, occasionally, lichen simplex chronicus, which is uh, you know a chronic form of atopic eczema, where you rub the skin and it thickens up. Occasionally, it can have that colour as well. But most times, if you see that colour, uh, it's going to be lichen planus. As in the side, the only other time you'll see that colour is around the eyes and the eyelids in dermatomyositis. That has a lilac colour as well. So, let's go back to some of the information here. We've said mainly look at the anterior wrists and look at the anterior shins as well. Often the lichen planus in this area is a bit more um, keratotic. Uh, the lesions are often thicker and occasionally if there's several of them uh, they may be mistaken for squamous cell skin cancers and even a biopsy can be misinterpreted as a squamous cell skin cancer but we'll come to that later. Always look in the mouth and lichen planus, it's important. Um, not all skin lichen planus has lichen planus on the inside of the mouth. And correspondingly, you can uh, have oral lichen planus without any skin involvement. The classic pattern that most of us would recognize would be the net like the reticulate pattern that you see on the buccal mucosa. And I think we have a little picture of that there. There's that white net-like pattern. It's often a lot more marked than, than that, but it's reticulate or net-like, and it's on that buccal surface, usually both sides. Of course, you can get lichen planus involving other intraoral um, areas, you know, the lungs, the gingiva, and sometimes it doesn't just present as a white area like this. It presents as an erosion um, or even a frank ulcer. By the way, you might look at that and say, oh, I think that's just a bit of candida. Well, try rubbing it off. If it's candida, it will come off um, if with, with a, a cotton bud. If it's lichen planus, it certainly won't. Um, we've said there, if you just have skin lesions in lichen planus, usually the condition will resolve uh, in a year or certain, certainly in the second year. If you've got oral involvement, the condition tends to be much more chronic and it tends to be recurrent. 
you'll see nail changes in 5 to 10 percent of patients and uh, you know you see other mucosal surfaces we've talked about the mouth but the vulva and uh, the gentle areas now certainly in women in the vulva lichen planus can present as erosive or ulcerated lesions can be very painful can be difficult to diagnose um, lichen sclerosis is a differential diagnosis there squamous cell carcinoma is a differential diagnosis um, uh, extra mammary Paget's disease can uh, present in the vulva and look like lichen planus so there's a variety of conditions you have to consider this is something here that's just been found recently that lichen planus if it's involved in the mouth it may in fact involve the esophagus and it's usually the bit esophagus so they can get strictures they have difficulty swallowing so if you've got severe lichen planus just ask about uh, esophageal features because it may be more extensive than you think these were some of the other skin variants you can get linear lichen planus and that means it just occurs either in uh, following a black skull line or, or perhaps just on the inside of the uh, thigh or the arm uh, there's a condition called lichen striatus that I think is actually the same as linear lichen planus at least histologically it can look very similar tends to occur in young children, as I say, often the inside of the thigh or the inside of the upper arm. The hypertrophic lichen planus we've spoken about already in the anterior shins. Bullous lichen planus, if you get enough damage at the dermoepidermal junction, you can induce a bulla, a blister. Annular lichen planus, particularly on the genital areas and ulcerated in the mouth. Let's just see if we can um, bring up some of those genital lesions. Um, before we do that, let me just show some other oral ones that allow me to get along. That's, see, that's much more extensive lichen planus in the inside of the mouth, and it's on the surface of the tongue. Look at the erosions that are there. Look at the, I mean, that's a painful, painful mouth. It's so difficult to swallow or eat with a mouth like that. Sometimes lichen planus will just affect the lip like this, and uh, you may again think it's a little bit of candida, but that won't come off. You see some little erosions here, and you should always be worried that this may in fact be a squamous cell skin cancer, especially in the lower lip. Um, and discoid lupus can sometimes present like this too. So you've got to do a biopsy here, punch biopsy, to see what the pathology is, because you know, you've know you got to exclude these two other conditions, but especially malignancy. Uh, that genital lichen planus, yeah, was here. Remember, as we said, annular lichen planus, typically on the genitals, on the glands, penis, like this. Um, here it's a more, uh, in a darker cut of skin, patients still have that sort of violaceous color around the out, outside here. It's difficult to get red and purple don't look the same in darker colored skin, but that's very typical. You know, your differential there, by the psoriasis, and it usually doesn't have that, uh, that annular pattern like that. Candida would uh, tend to have a pinkish erosion. So this one, remember that picture there. Sometimes lichen planus will, uh, because of the degree of involvement at the dermoepidermal junction, let me just show you this first. That's a lichenoid infiltrate. It attacks, the lymphocytes attack the dermoepidermal junction here. And they'll often damage it. And, and uh, melanocytes, which are along here, will be destroyed and the melanin will come down into the dermis here and be taken up by melanophages. And that gives rise to the hyperpigmentation that you classically see in lichen planus. So if we go and look perhaps at, um, at this case, here the hyper, this has been lichen planus and someone with dark colored skin. But because they're so dark, the hyperpigmentation is very, very marked. Um, however, you can get, when lichen planus heals, it tends to leave this post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. And some patients may present, like this patient presented with a sort of inverse uh, lichen planus that was just these areas of hyperpigmentation. When you looked out, though, um, with the eye of faith, you'd need to say that these were more purple and the more typical papules of lichen planus. But this one was different. This was another groin 
patch of pigmentation like this, there's nothing, there might be a little bit of purple at an edge here, but um, took a biopsy to uh, define that this was, in fact, uh, hyperpigmented inverse lichen planus. This patient had it in the groin and also had it in the axillae, but didn't have it anywhere else. It's an unusual variant. There's another unusual variant called lichen planus actinicus that tends to be seen in um, countries in the Middle East and I, I think also in India and, and Pakistan. And they present with these areas of hyperpigmentation on the face, often with this pallor around the outside. It's very curious. Um, but this tends to be lichen planus that's only occurring in certain sun-exposed areas. But as I say, typically seen in India or uh, in the Middle East. We spoke about the hypertrophic type of lichen planus. This is here on the front of the shins. Um, the skin is really quite thick. These are very itchy. You've got to watch if you biopsy these because it'll show what's called pseudoepitheliomatous hyperplasia. That means thickening of the overlying stratum, uh, strat, uh, the overlying epidermis. And there'll be a bit of inflammation at the base, and occasionally it'll be reported as an inflamed, well-differentiated SCC if you have perhaps set it down as that, if you haven't recognized that it's like plants. Look at the bit of pigmentation around the outside here as well. You'll get that in LP, you'll get it also in lupus. But just watch that hypertrophic variant of lichen planus. Uh, let's go back just to the text here. We've said uh, nail changes can occur in about 5 to 10 percent of, uh, of patients. Well, Let's have a look at some of those nail changes. This is really a very aggressive form of lichen planus that's caused that degree of destruction of the nails. You know, this is lichen planus affecting the nail matrix and may well be affecting the nail bed for all I can see there. But, you know, this is very marked. Um, this was a picture I inherited. I uh, wasn't a patient that I've seen, but you can imagine. It's almost as if there's a blister occurring in this one here with the lichen planus. This is the more typical um, type of scarring that you'll get with lichen planus if it just affects several nails. You get destruction, uh, because it involves the nail matrix here, you get destruction of the nail here. And this is called a trigium. Um, it's a form of scarring. And that's very typical of lichen planus. There's another variant of lichen planus of the nails called 20 nail dystrophy. 20 nail dystrophy. Seen in children, it's got a rough surface to the, the nails. Um, look a bit like psoriasis, but it's not quite psoriatic pitting. It's just dy dystrophy um, and uh, a rough surface. And all the nails are involved. But, you know, after a year or more, that condition just, can just completely disappear. And they may not have any typical features of lichen planus anywhere else. So, you know, it's still one that we attribute to lichen planus, but really we're, uh, we're not sure. This is, again is just to go over the typical polygonal papules, lilac colored, uh, particularly in front of the wrists and sometimes on the palms of the hands uh, like this. And I've said here histologically these will show a thick well applied layer of lymphocytes tightly applied to the basement membrane. Um, this is the histology with that band like or lichenoid infiltrate. Uh, there are other conditions that can have a lichenoid infiltrate, but they usually don't adhere quite as well as this one does to the basement membrane with destruction. You get little apoptotic cells that fall uh, from here into the dermis um, because of the destruction of the lichen planus, and that's relevant when we come to look at immunofluorescence. This is a much more aggressive lichen planus. Look at the, look at the thinning of the epidermis that's occurred here. Um, there's one of these pinkish apoptotic cells, a dead cell, um, and there's, there's, you know, there's only a few layers left to the epidermis here. This is and there's edema, and this could develop into a bulla and get bullous like and planus. It's commented here that if there are eosinophils in the infiltrate, it suggests a lichen or drug reaction. So occasionally, lichen or drug reactions will give um, a bully. Um, you know, even a, a fixed drug reaction can sometimes be bullous, and there's a lichenoid infiltrate that does that. Okay, and we said, yeah, 
if some of those apoptotic cells fall down into the dermis, then they're the ones that uh, show up in immunofluorescence with immunoglobulin. I think, I'm not sure if it's IgG or IgM that you'll find, maybe a mixture of both, but you see these um, conglomerates of cells in the papillary dermis like that. Uh, these last series of pictures were just to show you a more generalized lichen planus. Look at that color, still that color lichen planus of the palm, not as florid as the edge as we showed uh, with it. In fact, I don't think I could make a diagnosis of lichen planus just from that picture. Linear lichen planus, but this is only, this isn't lichen striatus, this is a linear lichen planus because of the Copner effect, scratching or irritating the skin and the lesions have come up in the uh, line of injury. Occasionally lichen planus can also affect the scalp, and it may just affect the scalp without much elsewhere and it's a scarring alopecia. So there are no hair follicles, there's no openings of hair follicles in these scarred areas. There may be a few remnant hairs sort of appearing here. Um, but you can see it's a scarring process, so you want to shut that off as quickly as possible if you've got a diagnosis of that, because, you know, when those hairs go, they're never going to come back. This is an, a variant of lichen plano pilaris. Um, you can see the inflammation around the hairs at the frontal scalp here, and it typically affects women. Uh, in fact, I think about 70% of the cases of lichen planus occur in women. And this, this frontal fibrosing alopecia is almost exclusively in women, um, postmenopausal. Look at the inflammation around the hair. If you look down there, you'll see a bit of plugging around the hairs as well. And the hairline used to be here, and it's gradually receding. That's why it's called frontal fibrosing alopecia. And this is another variant of, uh, of lichen planus. This was just the histology. There's the hair follicle there. And there's just the inflammatory infiltrate right round the hair follicle, causing ultimate destruction of it in, uh, in this condition. I think I've shown you most of the slides I wanted to show you. Let me just flick back along here and see if there's anything else. Oh, I think we've shown you everything. See if there was anything else in the text. Talked about that esophagus one. Talked about these variants. Um, yeah, we said the oral lesions can be reticulate. That's that net-like pattern in the buccal mucosa. Erosive, um, where you get erosions on the tongue or even in the gingiva. In fact, sometimes you can get a frank gingivitis just due to lichen planus. And ulcers, um, again, in the buccal surface or on the tongue. And the lip involvement, we said, you just have to watch. The thing about oral involvement as well is you potentially can develop SCC. And so that can develop in chronic vulval lichen planus, and particularly in oral and lip lichen planus, you can get that. And note the scarring of the scalp in lichen planus pilaris. Let's go along again, though, to treatment. How are you going to treat this condition? Well, I've said here initially, always check for drugs. Look at the drugs that they're on, especially if they've got oral involvement, because you, uh, there's, you know, if, you, if, the, if it's a drug that's causing this, um, then uh, if you don't pick it up, it's just going to go on and on and on. So watch for some of the antihypertensives, watch for the diuretics, but a whole variety of drugs have caused oral lichen planus. You need to just Google and, and check out the drugs and see if they've been reported. And it's worthwhile in some parts of the world certainly check for hepatitis C because there's uh, um, high levels of lichen planus in patients with hepatitis C. I think the figure of roughly 20% in some parts, uh, I think in Scotland where I, where I came from, um, the quoted figures of 20% of the patients who have chronic hepatitis C have lichen planus. Um, if you can treat the hep C, does the lichen planus go? Might. How are you going to treat lichen planus anyway? Strong topical steroid creams. It's a, you saw that inflammation at the dermal epidermal junction. You need a strong steroid cream to get through there and slam that inflammation off. So the likes of Diprazone, Elifrat, Delacon, that type of thing. Sometimes steroids under occlusion. Remember that thick hypertrophic lichen planus on the, on the shins, this one here? You know, a little bit of cream isn't going to penetrate through there, not easily. So you have to put the cream on and wrap, glad wrap around it. You know, put Diprazone or Diprazone OV on it. 
and wrap glad wrap around it. And that'll then penetrate and flatten the slot down. Sometimes you need to use a bit of interlesional kennicott. Take some kennicott day 10, one mil of that, and mix it with three mils of local to get the 2.5 milligram per mil and just inject small amounts into this over these areas and this will flatten down nicely and then your topicals can take over. Um, hydrosol for genital lichen planus, well yes and no, certainly for males um, on the penis, got to watch, you use strong fluorinated steroids on that, you know your diprazons, your alicons for any length of time. Sure, you'll, you'll get rid of that, but if you keep using it, you'll end up with a pink penis because of damage from the strong steroid. So, you know, maybe some Elecon there nightly for a week or so, and then follow it up with hydrazole, which is a mixture of just 1% hydrocortisone and clotrimazole. We use that for psoriasis, but it's a very safe preparation um, for, you know, for thinned areas, genital areas like this. But remember, if it's a female with really erosive lichen planus effect in the vulval area, then that's different. You do need a strong fluorinated steroid there, and you may need it for a month or more, uh, twice daily, till the area has healed, and then perhaps you can get away with a weaker topical steroid like uh, like hydrazole to uh, to help it. Tacrolimus. Remember all those lymphocytes there that uh, are T cells attacking the dermal epidermal junction? Well, calcium neuron inhibitors like tacrolimus or permicrolimus, um, they are useful in inhibiting the, uh, these cells, inhibiting the damage that they in fact do. So uh, we don't have tacrolimus here in Australia yet. It's called protopic. But you can get it made up at a compounding pharmacist because it's expensive. Um, and that'll work. Uh, similarly, by the way, there's a strong topical steroid that we don't have here called clobetazole, and that's sometimes needed for females with severe ulcerative lichen planus. And again, you have to get that made up at a compounding pharmacist. Um, for severe oral lichen planus, you're usually looking at oral steroids. You may get away with some acetretin, which uh, it's okay in males, difficult to use in females um, because of its teratogenicity. Cyclosporin uh, can be used, again, remember it inhibits T cells, so it can be used for severe oral lichen planus. If you've got problems with blood pressure and kidney and you know, low risk of lymphoma, and it increases your risk of skin cancers if you're on that for any length of time. And lichen planopolaris, that one with the, the scalp here, um, or frontal fibrosing alopecia, then again, tacrolimus topically here, strong uh, steroid cream rubbed in or, or, or some Novoselin lotion twice daily there, some intralesional kenacort um, to try and shut this off, but also hydroxychloroquine, um, plaquenil can be used. Same drug that's used for certain types of discoid lupus. Uh, again, it's a, a good preparation for um, lichen planum polaris. So, difficult condition affects a whole variety of structures, mucosal, adnexal, uh, with the nails and the scalp, uh, even the esophagus. Uh, and watch for drug-induced. Don't miss a drug-induced lichen planus because it's the one type of lichen planus that you can fix fairly easily. Thank you very much.